Welcome to the show. We're back and better than ever, I believe. I uh, yeah, that actually that uh, that intro there for us might be changing soon. I, uh, yeah, that we have some uh, some big moves. Yeah, money we, moves. I we believe got a guy is the term. That knows a guy who met knows. a guy. Yeah, his mailman's best friend used to be married to an old lady, and she owns a piano. So <laughs> you so add all that up. <laughs> yeah, you get a new sound effect. But once again, I am Nick. Uh, this is two dumb idiots uh, talk about a variety of subjects we know. You know, very little about her, just as much as the average person. Um, we're going to have a lot of inaccuracies. Is that right, Lamb? Well, you're going to have a lot of inaccuracies. <laughs> hey. That's for sure. I tried to bundle you up there, but <laughs> thought, you know, everybody well, It happens has, pretty easily. Everybody has inaccuracies, you know. <laughs> I am inaccurate maybe one out of three times. You slightly, slightly higher at a six out of ten. Um, so wow, <laughs> wow. I mean, Your de- definition of slight and my definition of slight are... Slightly different. I was hoping you wouldn't be that great at fractions. Here we go. Uh, uh, I'm not that good, <laughs> but I'm better than you. Here we go. Um, so me and Lamb today, um, we were looking for something that, as well as uh, nonsensical, would be a little bit uh, informative. Maybe you learned something. So um, as a kid, we got told a lot of dumb crap. A lot of dumb crap. I'm learning this now as an adult that my parents knew nothing. I... Literally, as I'm looking, so today's episode, folks, uh, is going to be common myths that you were told as a kid that now are not even close to true. Some of these are, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, I knew that. Some of these are going to be like, oh, wow, I've been told that my entire life. So I I think I had a lot of those moments as I found out some of these. Can you think of something that you were told as a kid that as you grow up, it's maybe not a myth, but something that is wildly not true today? So... Part of it is hard because we've done a little research on these things. So I'm trying to pick something that wasn't that, wasn't that, on that, the list. that isn't going to be talked about by us. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just I just remember now as I grew up, there's a lot of times that your parents say little white lies to you and you don't know any better. Uh, yeah, I'll like I'll tell like you your dad will be home soon? Yes. That, well, that's... <laughs> That might be a little too deep. That might be a little too deep. A little like, too like early a, in the podcast like to get that far. <laughs> <laughs> Down the rabbit hole. started crying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll try and keep the whimpering <laughs> to a minimum, folks. Um, so the one thing that immediately jumps to my mind is one time in my old neighborhood I used to live in, it was a little um, rough around the edges. And <laughs> one time we came out, and I was probably seven or eight years old, and the front window of the car was broken, and the stereo was missing. And I didn't notice really the stereo that much, but when I came out when we were all with my mom, we said, "Oh, what happened?" She said, that damn heat just blew that window clean off. And we we're like, "It must be hot as hell out here." <laughs> but I, it literally, you know, until you're like 20, you look back and you're like, "Wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense." Mom was pretty quick on her feet. <laughs> yeah, so she just didn't want to know that there was thugs about. So, but I think that I look back and that's pretty funny. I see. Um, but yeah, if something comes to your mind, there's a lot of oh, uh, uh, probably uh, yeah, you won't um, you won't like the taste of beer. Oh yeah, yeah, that's like, a good one. yeah they, they, I remember my mom, like my oh grandfather my God, so loved true. a beer, and we would, you know, he would always just, you know have one or whatever, and I'd be like, have some. And I'm like, oh, you don't want to take that? It's gross. It's well, gross. You know it's what? Gross. She is kind of right. I think for beer, <laughs> but now I, I really enjoy it. I tell people though, if you look around society, and I'm going to say this is a wild generalization, huge net I'm throwing here, but I have noticed that in my my lifestyle, whoever I've come across, the people that like beer tend to people that that went to college at some point. I tend to think that I didn't like beer before I went to college. I didn't have any money. It was the only <laughs> option I had. So for four years, you drink something you have no option. To, oh, that's if you want to get drunk, that's what you're drinking. By the end, of it, you're like, hey, this is some pretty good stuff, you know. Well, then my palatable. college career has just influenced my life pretty hard. I'm at the point now where I actually have found a few non-alcoholic beers that I enjoy <laughs> because I, think I that's when you have a problem though. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I want to have a beer, but it's, it's lunchtime. <laughs> yeah. I want to have a well, beer, the, but it's church. <laughs> actually, my bigger issue now as I've gotten much, much older is, um, well, you know, we've already established I am much older. Yes. <laughs> but is the hangover. Oh, yeah. That's very true. So now for me, the hangover is so much that it, it's not even like – a day or an afternoon, it's it's carrying in like it's Could impacting my week. Yeah, for like, sure. Like if it's you're uh, still tired. I was, yeah, and I never catch up, and it just gets worse and worse and Frankie worse. Frankie drinks uh, Pedialyte after uh, Frank's our intern. If you don't know, he drinks Pedialyte uh, the night that he is done getting shammered, and the next day 
uh, after the shamanization, would you say you've ever tried the Pedialyte trick? I have, but Pedialyte is gross. It's actually <laughs> disgusting. I literally can't I, do it I str- that. Like, I'll drink beer. And I struggle to drink pizza. Yeah, you're not going to talk me into the fact that it's a whole lot better than Gatorade, so I'll have a Gatorade. And I'm sure that I'm wildly incorrect. Gatorade is basically Kool Aid, but it's <laughs> yeah, I don't know what they're saying. But they, maybe uh, Pedialyte had like cooler bottles or something. <laughs> I, like somebody at the Pedialyte like has to figure out how to make it taste better. Just put I, more sugar in. Oh, I guess they can't put more sugar in. I had I had one at some sort of special Pedialyte once. It was viscous. It was literally thick. It was like drinking like half. Cough syrup, half water. At and that point, I'll, I, I'll just be sick. And I was actually sick drinking it, right. and I couldn't get it down. No. no at that point, so let I'll, alone if I'd just been boozing up, yeah. and I'm like, ah, I'll be fine. The other thing that you said that about alcohol that reminded me of, and I don't know if this is necessarily a myth, but my mom, I remember when I was like 10, my granddad said, it was a basic curse word, like damn or shit or something. And I said to my mom, I said, well, when am I allowed to say those words? And she said, when you get older. And I said, well, how old? Like, when do I get older? She said, much, much, much older. And in my head, like, that, like, sounded like law almost. Like, if I went around and said it, people were like, you know you're not supposed to say it until you're 27. Like, that's the rule. And I just, as I grow up, I think it's really funny that she just wouldn't. <laughs> like, it was like specific. beer you would get carded for yeah. cursing. <laughs> like, <laughs> like sir, I'm going to need you to see your uh, yeah. driver's license. It wasn't specific. It was just whenever you get older. So I think that's really funny. But uh, let's go ahead and jump into it. Um... The topic today, again, is common hood myths, common myths that maybe as a child that your parents told you or that you heard through the grapevine um, that were supposed to help you out, but as you get older, really are not true. Um, yeah, that's the one thing, the big overall take I've gotten here is, first off, none of these need to be myths. No. That, I A lot of these legitimately are, I'm actually confused as to why they were even told in the first place. Like, I, there's a couple in here, I'm like, okay, I get what they were trying to do. Some of them, I'm like... What's the angle here? Why did anybody even I know. make did this some, up? Did somebody like at one point just decide to put out like a book of lies? Yeah, just for giggles and or <laughs> like, spread of misinformation. Yeah. Back then, it wasn't even an internet. Like, how did this happen? Um, so let's get right into something that maybe is really common on this list here. We have a bunch here, Lamb. What would you say right off the bat here? Which it's the one that jumps out to you oh, is the most common. Before we get to that, uh-huh. I love the fact that there was no internet when these came out. Right. So so how did and you and I grew up oh in goodness. different places. That's so true. And we all got these myths. That's so, so true. I agree with that. Take very much. I'm going to give you applause from the crowd. I just held up the applause sign and all 125 people cheered. I know. <laughs> it, was, it was nice. It felt, felt good. They, I'm, I'm walking really a little taller now. Too. But it, it's like how these are like pervade society even before the internet. They got to everywhere. Like everybody's heard these. I, does, that's what, I think that's what you're saying. Is I didn't right. see a single one online that I hadn't heard. But that's what I'm saying. And now that you're saying that actually does, that, that really does spark something in me, thinking that that's why they were missed for so long. Like when, like we kind of, like our generation kind of sucks because anytime like we didn't believe something, you could just look it up. Back then, it's like you wanted to look that up. You had to get like an encyclopedia or something. You weren't going to find that. Are and these they, facts for our parents? Are they facts still? I That's what I'm saying. I mean, I. That's At least another. our grandparents. They're probably there, I bet facts. there's a bunch of questions. I bet there's a. I bet half of these. If I told my grandparent, she would still tell me they're true, because yeah. she's still not been corrected. Yeah. As as no, as, she just knows them as facts. Yes, right. That's what I'm saying. So and, and she'd be I, like myth. What? Really funny story about my grandmother. Um, she cracks me up. Um, we uh, go to our cabin every year in Pennsylvania, and up there there is a store that you can buy groceries in. The store is called Scotts, and underneath Scotts. At the bottom, in very small print, it says low cost, right? I don't really know why it says that, but it does. For 20 years, my grandmother has called this place Low Scots. It's not called Low Scots. It's called Scots Low Cost. But for years, she's called it Low Scots. So so I'm saying, as a kid, my entire life, I thought there was a Low Scots. And then I come to find out that she has just merged this crap together. (laughs) So, so like, when she'll say something to my dad, she'll go, she'll go, uh... Well, to be honest with you, Rob, she's like, I don't even think there's a low Scots down there. And he's like, I don't think there's a low Scots anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fair enough, right? Yeah. Very true. Very so, true. Uh, you know, that again, just a, kind of the, the crap that your parents say that eventually you find out they're all kind of wrong and insane. And we're pretty stupid, but we've been fed a lot of garbage. Maybe <laughs> yeah. it's their I fault. Think, I think that's a great thing for this episode is it's proving how stupid the world is. I Yeah, I 
forever now. I mean, literally now, just to peeve my dad, I call it low sky. <laughs> sure I'm like, yeah, that. he loves it. And he doesn't, actually. He really? He doesn't see any humor in it. He just wants it to be called Scott, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Give Scott his goddamn to <laughs> do. Yes. But it does make me laugh every time she goes, you know, she said, I don't even think it's down there, low Scott. She's like, I haven't seen a low Scott since I've been here. <laughs> so I'm Still looking for the yeah, place. That's right. So, um... But with that said, uh, grandmothers are crazy, and they tell us a lot of stuff that's not true. What's something you heard right. from your grandparent that was not true, Lamb? All right. Um, I'm going to go with this one right here. Okay. I think that's the number one for me. Yeah. Um, it's chewing gum. When I was a kid, I remember hearing if you swallowed gum, mm -hmm. seven years. Seven years. Seven years, it would be inside of you, and if you swallowed too much of it, it would build up inside of you. A ball of gum. And you wouldn't be able to, you know, eat or live or anything. That is Tony. Tony from the Tony studio. It was so absurd. But Tony, you have heard people tell you that if you swallow gum, it's going to take seven years for your body to digest. They now, said legitimately it takes almost no now, extra time. See, now, the thing of it, I always thought as a kid, uh -huh. and maybe this is like the tweak I had as a kid, was that it didn't digest ever. It just, because it was so sticky, it took so long to work its way <laughs> down see? that it would, like, just took seven years to work its way through you. Dude, I, I, Tony's calling it rubbish. Where would it get stuck in your body for seven years? I mean, Your intestines. I don't know. I'm a child. I don't know how bodies work. I legitimately, it's so funny that Kevin thinks that the gum was cr slowly creeping down his esophagus for the last seven years. Yeah. I thought there was some lump in the side of my stomach where all the gum had gathered itself and just formed some mega mold as it decomposed down there. <laughs> I mean, legitimately. All right, Tone. Uh, we appreciate the hot takes. Yes. But if you're going to make them, please. <laughs> yell, make them. Scream it into the mic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give us but, a little more. Yeah, Tony's right. Uh, it would have to be a piece of tar for your body to actually not <laughs> process that correctly. But I, I'm just saying, it, in my mind, I remember distinctly as a child. I'm going to be embarrassed to say this. I legitimately, until I read the fact, have had nobody ever correct me. Like, no. no, I've never heard anybody say that that's not true. Yeah. So when I read it on multiple sites, I thought, well, I actually feel like an idiot because I had never been correct. I thought that was – I mean, it, honestly, I know it sounds crazy, but it kind of made sense to me. It's like, oh, it's gum. That's why you can't – Yeah, it's it. not – is gum food? I mean, apparently because your body can digest it, but I don't think – But do they digest it or is it just like corn where it comes out the way it went in? I – First off, that's also not true. <laughs> well, you know, you can see that the corn, you've eaten corn. <laughs> you've eaten is what corn. I'm saying. Right. But I think your body does absorb most it, of the yeah, corn. Yeah, I, the I get, like, yeah, right. I'm just, I'm talking more like. Let's get really deep into that. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's hey. a shitty take. All right, anyway. Oh, wow, perfect. Well played. <laughs> uh, but, that was a fart noise for you, Tony, over there. Uh <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Tony Park Duck. Yeah, he likes a good, everybody likes he's a good a, yeah, he's, part noise. Yeah. Um, jokes are his specialty. So, yeah, without um, without beating to death, the gum is not true. Apparently, if you have gum, you swallow it by accident, your body will push it out. I don't recommend just eating a, a pack of Wrigley's. <laughs> I don't think that <laughs> substitutes as yeah. a dinner. But wouldn't gum come with something that says, don't, does it ever say anything like, don't swallow this, don't eat this? I have literally no idea. I don't know why that this thought popped into my head. I was thinking... There have been times in the last few years that I've bought a pack of Big League Chew just because it looked good, and then I put, like, you know, the whole lot in my mouth for no reason. And now I'm thinking, what if I had swallowed all that? That might take a while. Probably not. Apparently uh, not. I, I remember as a kid distinctly, like, like contemplating, is it worth the swallow? For sure. Like, am I in this situation? And, like, you're I like, I have nowhere to get it. rid of this. And I'm like regretting it but i'm like i'm gonna do it i'm gonna take this seven years like <laughs> i remember swallowing I like, and thinking like now every time i eat food i'm gonna be full faster because yeah, by, it. my, it's cut it fill it yeah because my stomach is now filled with all this gum that when i go to have barbecue ribs i'm only gonna have six instead of seven now i feel like as a kid that this was almost like getting into debt like you had a seven year commitment to this swallowing this piece of gum you're like am i willing to take on this gum debt for seven years. I legit thought it was taking up space in my stomach and that I would henceforth not be able to eat as much. All right, hold on. Tony wants to chime in. The funny in. thing is, is there's a middle ground here. You can just say, like, 
you're not supposed to because you can't digest this. You don't have to, like, make up this old wives' tale. I agree. Right? You don't have to tell your kid it turns into acid bombs. <laughs> Just say it's not good for you. It's not good for you, but you don't have to turn into, like, a horror tale. Yeah, right? seven years. Why is everything seven years? Yeah. You break a mirror, you go under a ladder. Everything seems to be seven years of bad juju. Yeah, and yet, in some cultures, you. seven is the it's magic number. You. you don't have to, like... I, I, think, I think Tony's right. Tony's on to something, which is that... All of these myths, a little bit, are fear provoked. Oh yeah, right. Oh yeah. Like the kids, in order for a kid to learn something, you have to scare them to death with it. You know, if you don't brush your teeth, some man's gonna come here and bang them all out of your mouth. You're like, all right, let me. Yeah, brush or yeah, teeth. like if you get out of bed in the night, a monster's gonna eat you. Yeah, like, right, pull you out of bed. I'll go back to bed. <laughs> like, yeah, like, um, all right, so that's right, number one. Like, I think we can move on from that one. Uh, but yeah, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of. Yeah, a lot of uh, misconceptions on that one. Still, re- I still won't swallow gum if I can avoid it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, I absolutely won't. Here's another one. This is probably one of the most common things I've ever heard in my entire life. Again, probably the number two thing that I was stunned to hear <laughs> is not true. We use 10% of our brain. That has been said to me at least a thousand times in my lifetime. Yeah. Your brain, only we only use 10% of it. People are like, can you imagine if we used the other 90%? Apparently, that is rubbish. Apparently, there are parts of the brain that have that we don't use, but it is nowhere near 90%. Apparently, either... I, why, why would... why? What's the benefit of lying about that? Do you think science has changed, or do you well, think... I would... So I have a like a kind of an odd take because I kind of believe this still even against right. the research. That's right. Uh, there's a couple myths on here I feel that way about. And it's because <laughs> I take from- hell yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's in the fact that rarely is all of your ba- brain used at once. Yeah. Like no matter what you're doing, usually you're doing a task. You're not, you know, and like speaking uses one part of the brain, thinking, you know, whatever. Math uses another part of the brain. I don't know how brains work. Right. We're dumb. But obviously <laughs> mine might be working at 9% compared to everybody else's 10%. Right. I don't know. Four, whatever. Yeah. Pick a number. Yeah. As long as it's single digits, I probably know it. <laughs> I know most of them. So, okay. So, yeah, I'm trying to figure out. But. Like, I feel like it's just not using all of it all the time. So maybe science has gotten better to be able to see that more of the brain is used than we thought. And, like, like maybe it's more sensitive equipment so they can tell the, like, minor things are being used versus major things. I don't know. But it does seem – it seems impossible to me that we're using 100% of our brain all the time. Yeah. And also so, – well, that's actually what I read. Somebody said that – um when we're simply at rest or thinking, we may actually only be using 10% at that moment. But the idea that that's the only thing we'll use in a lifetime is factually wildly inaccurate. Apparently, neurologists said it's laughable. Like, it's so ridiculously wrong. And they think that maybe the origin of the myth was almost said in jest, almost instead as a joke. They said, like, you know, men are stupid and that that we're, you know, so consumed with sex that we're only using 10% of our brain. Almost sounds like a Seinfeld skit. But um, I, to me, that actually is a really funny one, and I was stunned to hear that. I honestly was stunned to hear that. So that one you cross off the list. I, uh, I'm embarrassed. Yeah, uh, with that, like, there's literally movies, like, based on this. I, uh, there's entire, like— the just, Limitless. I, mean, yeah. I could rattle off a ton of movies. Shows. There's so many things, like, I mean where one. a guy becomes, like, uses the full potential of his brain. Right. And, like, you got to unlock all these secret chambers in there where there is, you know, just And then he can, powers. like, yeah, do things, like, see the future and shit. Like, I'm going to give away my real intelligence here, but I've always thought, because of this— Dumbass myth that, like, if I could just focus hard enough that I could maybe move a box or something with my hand or I could read somebody's mind or I could start a fire with it. But I'm like, well, I just don't know how to use that other 90%. Yeah, man, if I could just access it. Like, I always – yeah, like, there's some sort of door that I've been – my brain's been hiding behind. If I could somehow figure out the combination to it. And I could just get a beer without standing up. I could, you know, send my number to a girl across the bar, really impress her. Harry Potter type stuff. I mean, let's get all back. That's all it is. Harry Potter type stuff. I but I apparently okay. Let's but real quick. Okay, is that true? Any possibility? Any possibility at all that that human beings have the that the abilities that we've never been able to unlock to move a box with their mind? That that specific skill seems beyond because it's not like it's something we can do outside of right. 
Because like, we haven't been able to replicate it anywhere else. Yeah, it's not right. like you can. we have a machine that can do this. <laughs> right, So, right. like, maybe our brains could do it. Right. Like, it yeah. just seemed, that one seems outside. The Do our brains potentially have the ability to do something that we can't do right now that we don't even know about? Absolutely. There was a, a again, this is probably a myth, but I remember a story traveling around when I was a kid that they had put a bunch of people into a stadium and put, like, a baseball or a golf ball in the middle, and then they said, all, everybody at the same time, we want you to imagine this baseball lifting up or moving. <laughs> Obviously, nothing moved. Um, but they people really thought that. People really thought if we could just get enough, you know, brainwave shot at this baseball, or, you know, that we could move something. And, you know, I, I, mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm stupid, but I thought, you know, no, I kind of think that might it, work too, but I, I guess not. I feel like it does have some basis if you think about it at the most basic level. Your brain is made of, like, electricity and, right. like, things shooting around, like waves and all that stuff. So That's true. Theoretically, there is some sort of power being transferred well, yeah, into like brain. a shock through your finger or yeah. something you, like oh, yeah. your finger like jerks without your yeah, i mean that's yeah. something that that's like an electrode or electrons yeah. or yeah a, things are moving like electricity <laughs> is being moved so like and electricity and magnetism work together like we can have electromagnet so yeah. theoretically i i don't want to get too far off topic it just reminds me of i think malcolm called it the hive for the the hive theory which is that if you took like a um if you took like a container of marbles or jelly beans mm -hmm. or something and it was let's say there was 5000 in there the theory, and it's apparently been tested multiple times, is that if you take 5,000 people and they all guess how many jelly beans are in there, and then you take 30,000 people and take a guess at how many jelly beans are in there, if you take the average of the 5,000 and compare it to the average of the 30,000, the 30,000 will be closer because – I, and this is something that is hard to explain, but apparently the more brains you get on a certain thing, the closer you will actually get to the truth. That's fascinating to me. So if you take 5,000 people, you all guess how many jelly beans, and they all say the average about 240. And then you take 50,000 people, and they say, well, it's actually their, – their, their average came to 252. And then you look it up, it's actually 255. Is what it is. They tend to be closer the more people take a guess. Isn't that interesting? That's called the hive theory, and it's been tested hmm. over and over and over, but apparently it, it's – Malcolm, is that true? Is, did I summarize that right? All right, that's good enough. Yeah, Malcolm said, eh, close enough. <laughs> yeah, gave him that, was his, uh, his, wink yeah, that was his uh, thing. Um, but yeah, too far off talking. But that's, I think that's interesting. Maybe we'll talk I about I mean, I get it. Like, I feel like the more... I don't know if that's brain power, but it is yeah, something to be said about that, right? I, I don't I know like how it's like works. a bell curve. Like, usually, like, maybe, yeah. you know, like... But where does the bell... How does... How does just like, naturally, like, Why would happens? the bell curve not go the wrong direction, too? I don't know. It doesn't matter. I feel um, like just if you meet enough people, like yeah. enough of them are going to be smart, enough of them are going to be dumb, and most people are in the middle. And the more people you have in the middle, how do we both end up dumb then? Okay, so hey, next, man, next, next top, it's a uh, low probability, <laughs> high reward. <laughs> hey. Um, well, you know, I'm tall, so that's all. I got the tallness. Um, all right, so let's go to the next one there. So again, we were a little Good, bit surprised yeah, at yeah, the. Uh, you get, get that at the gym. Like, <laughs> yeah, you can't just be tall. Dude. You got to work at it. Uh, uh, um, Next one for us. This is another one. This is I don't. I, how have I never heard this? That that turkey, Frankie or Frankie, grab this. Turkey has the same level of tryptophan as chicken and beef. Mind blown. That is mind blown. Mind blown. Your head is all blown over the walls, dude. Uh, I can see it from here. There's blood all over the walls. There's brain fragments floating around in the kitchen, in the studio. <laughs> Does that mean I get to eat twice as much? You can eat that is no, literally you can't eat more of anything. I'm just saying <laughs> We're just saying I mean, does turkey make you sleepy, Frank? Does turkey make you sleepy? Yeah. But people assume that, but as Lamb has previously stated, the sleepiness could just become of the inordinate amount of mashed potatoes you had on top of the turkey. Right, right. So double the chicken? No, you don't we're not doubling the chicken, we're not doubling any of the meat. I don't think you're grabbing this. I think <laughs> All right, yeah, I think we're gonna have to move on to Frank. <laughs> yeah, Frank, uh, put a pin in that for later, Seems and we'll like get Frank we'll maybe talk has some about form of a stroke. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk. Uh, Land, what's your take on that? Uh, my take is, I eat turkey like actual like roasted turkey mm -hmm. once a year, and then however long it takes to eat the leftovers. Yes, that's literally the exact same as me. I will never eat roasted turkey outside of that. So, no bearing. I don't have the greatest like thing because I overeat so heavily on right. in addition to that green bean casserole like a sugar rolls spike your body and like actually put gravy you down. yeah like and then stuffing is bread and then I take more bread yeah. and eat, eat, like I put like stuffing make a stuffing sandwich yes I somehow have a sandwich that's made of other bread I literally the next morning will toast a piece of bread layer it up with mashed potatoes turkey and gravy and I 
as I get older and I try to watch my diet, I look at that and I'm like, this is death in a sandwich. This is so much bad crap all mashed together. If any, the, honestly, the turkey is the only thing on that entire plate that's like reasonable. Rapid fire turkey, dark or white? Dark. Fantastic answer. Uh, that's all I have for rapid fire. <laughs> all right. Uh, chicken, dark or white? I don't know if there's an option. I'm always going dark meat no matter what the question is. I think dark meat's always better. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, fantastic. So uh, that actually was a surprise to me because I've never heard that any food outside of turkey has tryptophan. Maybe our internet sources are wildly incorrect. Maybe I read something that somebody made up, but that's what we heard is that tryptophan is found in other foods and that the turkey myth – is only because everybody falls asleep on Thanksgiving, yeah. which I do. Yeah. If you, I, I've overeaten before and felt like crap yeah. and gotten tired from it. I mean, how many times? Rapid time? fire. What else makes you sleepy? Food. Fast food. Yes. <sighs> also, Oof. another myth that we're not going to get into, but apparently MSG being making you tired, also not a thing, which I totally thought was a thing because every time I had Chinese food, I wanted to pass out. It has nothing to do with anything. I think, I think it's a wildly large volume of carbohydrates <laughs> I consume. <laughs> And the blood sugar spike that, <laughs> that follows yeah. um, causes my body to be like, hey, we're going to go work on this for a while. You go rest the rest of us. Be careful, Lynn. We don't want to come up too educated here. You're starting to sound <laughs> like just, you know what you're talking I'm about. I'm just saying my body gets angry at me and says yeah. – it basically puts me in hibernation mode so yeah, it can like deal word. with my dumb decisions. <laughs> yes. That's another big word. We might have to find somebody stupid to replace you. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, yeah, well, so you know. tryptophan was fascinating for me. I think, Glenn, when we were both surprised that it's not the only food that can put you down. I remember thinking again back to Seinfeld <laughs> of them eating tryptophan or eating turkey and just so they could fall asleep. That's crazy talk. Um, um, next one for me. Yeah, go for it. Cracking knuckles because I do it. Me do. I'm a habitual uh, yeah, knuckle cracker. I've, yeah, it's become a thing where I'm trying to actually limit it. Because yeah. it was just like constant all the time. Yeah, me too. And you know, the oh, always the thought was arthritis. It's gonna yeah. ruin your joints. It's yeah. terrible. <laughs> and then I remember at one point saying to my mom, "Like, I'll have a cure for that by the time I get it." Yes. <laughs> I've was, said that, that multiple my, times like, in my life. And I was like, things. and then in retrospect, I think about like, is that really a good like plan? Like, hope for a cure <laughs> down yeah. the road. <laughs> I uh, I crack my knuckles habitually as well. I am reluctant to say. That it doesn't cause arthritis because I I guess when you do something that you quietly have been told is bad, you still quietly believe that it is bad. And I think that's where I feel on, on crack. That, see, you I'm, just I'm said I want to stop cracking it, even though everybody tells you you're it's just fine. fine. In your head, you're like, yeah, but maybe they don't know anything yet because maybe they haven't been studying it since, like, the 40s, like they have everything else, yeah. you know. I also imagine, like – like, all this money goes to, like, cancer research and stuff. I don't know if there's, like, a <laughs> schmuck out there. It's just like one guy named <laughs> yeah, Todd, yeah. like, out there just doing the, the – the, the, Just brave work, you know, yeah, just every just day. out there just checking people's hands. Just, <laughs> <laughs> Fascinating. Like, oh. Yeah. Huh. Crypto's baseball. Interesting. Right, we'll have right. you back in 20 years. We'll yeah. see if you can do it again. Yeah. <laughs> just And it's one of those things, pauses. too. Like, it, like, in that time we've talked about it, I've had the urge to crack my knuckles. I've already cracked them multiple times. I crack like, my knuckles most of the time with one hand. So I'll take my thumb and just go through all my knuckles and crack, and I'll do the same thing with the other one. I don't even need two hands to crack my knuckles. I, yeah, my hands now, like, I just make a fist. That's, yeah, that's it's, also. And I'm like. My brother cracks his neck, and I know that there's going to be people that do oof. the same thing, and I'm always concerned that that's wrong. I'm always concerned that one time he's going to crack it, and it's just going to be stuck that way. <laughs> so I. That I, might be true. I do. <laughs> I, sure I do, I do the same thing. I crack my neck. Um, I actually got so, did it so much and got so worried about it that I asked a doctor, not a chiropractor, hey. an actual doctor. And we'll get minutes. into that. Um, and said, what, is there anything I can do to hurt myself? Hold your hand up. Do you think, I mean, my hand looks crooked. Like I think. I think mine looks pretty no, straight. Yours look, like if I hold mine up, yeah, I feel like my fingers look a little crooked, but I don't. I could just be the way you're. Yeah, I'm just going to be built that way. Body is also a weird cracking knuckle story. That's going to be really hard to tell over um, microphones. Is there used to be a kid in my college that actually this is going to be weird to say out loud taught me a new crack. So like you know you go through your whole your whole life and you learn all like all the ones you can do with your fingers, and he used to take people's hand and he put his thumb right behind the bottom, like the very bottom of your thumb, almost before it gets to your wrist, and he could take it and he'd go like this, and he would push it like that, like that. 
Hear that? Mm-hmm. I don't know what that is, but now I've started doing it. So now I grab my thumbs all the time. Oh, the other one just popped. So now I grab my thumbs and do this, and he would just rotate it in, and your thumb would actually pop. I, I that doesn't even, there's not even a, I mean, a, there's a joint there. I'm not aware of it. So that was fascinating to me. Uh, yeah, a thing that happens to me, since we're on this cracking thing, that kind of scares Smoke me crack. is oh. my sternum. You can crack it? I'll stretch back like I'm sh- pushing yeah. my chest forward. And I'll feel it separate, and it'll crack. That's fascinating. That must be a genetic disorder. Probably, because... He's a freak. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Keep it in the circus. <laughs> uh, because it's not a joint. <laughs> it literally is not a joint. Well, I... A lot of times, as I mean, I'm really tall. I'm like 6'3", 6'5", um, for the ladies. Um, but Those my... are two different numbers, ladies. <laughs> One's laying down. No. Uh, <laughs> that's, that'd be a really bad pickup line. I only went from like 6'3 to 6'5. Like, what, what's the, why even distinguish at that point? Uh, no. But as when I was younger, if my back was always messed up, I would tell my brother, and he's a strong guy, I would tell him, hey, can you crack my back? And so he would wrap his arms around me, and I'm sure there's other people that have done this, wrap his arms around me and pick me off the ground, and I could feel my back crack. I still do it, but as I get older, I think. That's the most unscientific, <laughs> dangerous way to crack something that literally controls every part of my body. My vertebrae cracks one way the wrong way, and now nothing in my body works. Yeah, he literally will <laughs> shake me up and down until I hear the crack. I mean, shake I, me feel, more. I feel like if I had a chiropractor, he'd just be pouring sweat as he watched. Like, what are you crazy? <laughs> yeah, and, and and we didn't even get into whether that's real or not. I, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, we should find that <laughs> so, out. So if somebody who is like questionably a doctor is worried, what it you sounds should like, probably really be worried. What it sounds like is we need more doctor friends to call on. <laughs> My ex-girlfriend was – her dad was a chiropractor, and so she would get what they call readjusted or, or adjusted or realigned. But you always sat down for it. I don't think there was a part where she stood up and she was shaked like a salt and pepper shaker until all the vertebrae snapped back into alignment. I, I, I think that's what they do at NASA up in the space station to make sure everybody's like <laughs> yeah. good to go. All right, everybody, you're pretty grab a partner. <laughs> they, just, they strap you, grab the, the, your hands over your head on a bar, and you strap your feet in this machine, and it just go, shakes Take you. Them. Just I think, pulls you like a bag of chips. I'm hoping it's more low, low brow than that. I'm <laughs> just, hoping it's just a, a 30 people in a room. Everybody grab a partner. Everybody take turns how big do you think the space station is well there's only like 30 important people there everybody else i is don't just... think there's 30 people on the space station at any given time oh not the space i was thinking more nasa related <laughs> oh sorry <laughs> oh that's <laughs> kind of like a mall up there <laughs> 30 people in the well, space they, station somebody's got to run the starbucks up there <laughs> True. You know? True. I mean, and it's a 24 hour Starbucks right. because there's no, <laughs> no sunlight <laughs> anyway. It's sunlight all the time it, in space. So right. somebody's got to operate the shitter. I mean, you know, there are jobs oh to be God. handled up there. there are, that'll be a whole nother episode is <laughs> jobs people don't want. We need to have, we need to, we're going to have a We'll talk to well, some of gonna... our great friends here that have had, along with us, some terrible jobs. Yeah, we need to do that. We also need to try and take on some really advanced subjects and. Since the show is called Do Dumb Idiots, I would love to see how far we could break it down. Um, with that said, we have gotten wildly off topic. Uh, let's get back to what oh, we're man. at here. Myths and... That doesn't uh, surprise me at all. Yeah, we are really... That's probably what the show should be called is Two Idiots Get Off Topic. <laughs> what but, were you saying? I yeah, think that would yeah, be Yeah, what were we saying? Uh, okay, so next one for us. Uh, we can go even a little bit rapid fire because there's a couple here that are kind of similar. But for me, uh, carrots. When I was a kid, I was told... If I ate carrots, that I could increase my vision. And I'm sure everybody out there was told their parents, if you ate carrots, it was so good for your eyes that your vision would almost increase. When we looked this myth up, it also said that people had been told as kids that if they ate it, it gave them night vision. Yeah, that one I had never heard. I would have to throw the flag up on that one. Say, Mom, I'm not <laughs> stupid. You know, yeah. I'm six, but I'm not. He wasn't born yesterday. Now, I mean, I don't understand where that came from. But I tell me, you genuinely believed eating carrots made your vision better? For sure. Absolutely. Still, Absolutely. I, I'm still, if I eat a carrot, I'm like, I'm yeah. thinking about my eyes. I'm, thinking, I'm well, like, I'm doing this for you, eyes. Go ahead and cancel like, that I, vision plan. Well, yeah, it's like, I'm like, eh, you know, sometimes you got to treat your eyes. I'm like, uh, I'm on the verge of needing glasses full time. So just to clarify, Instead carrots part-time. are good for your eyes. That was what we found out. Very good for your vision. The myth is that it increases your vision somehow. That has n- literally no factual evidence. See, I can see – this is one of the few I can see where it actually came from. Correct. It's basically just an it's elaboration. One, it's one step. Up yeah. It's one thing. step. 
Like the Bible. Yeah. Like, you know, One step from the truth. Jesus came along, and she said, I'm sick. And he said, now you feel better. And she felt a little better, and people said, this guy is just solving everything, you know? <laughs> yeah, he, Jesus heard of oranges or something like <laughs> yeah, that. Right. He, you know, you know, well, that, that actually leads into our next one, kind of the same, same token, which is vitamin C. My dad, for years, has taken vitamin C every day because he believes that it will keep him healthy. Now, uh, to his defense, he is rarely ever sick, but... In the same token, I am a son, my, and I have two brothers, and we, we're all rarely sick. So it could just be a— So you're saying you're not a vitamin C guy? I like vitamin C. Oh, I love vitamin C. I'm saying—but so, I, it's definitely not an intake daily for me. Uh, I definitely do plenty of days without it. Um, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm from the uh, drinking from the hose, playing the dirt generation, so I, I, you know, I tend to believe that— I also grew up in a daycare, <laughs> so like every day from the time I was like four years old, when I came downstairs, there was 12, 15 kids in my house snotting and pooping and sneezing and wiping their germs all over my face. So I think that, that I have a – this is, sounds like I'm an X-Men, but that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm just saying that I think I've been in a lot of situations where I've been exposed to a lot of things, and I think that helps me as I've gotten older. I, uh, I would I'm, say – I'm not a germaphobe I, in any sense. I'm of that same generation, if not Maybe even, even more, <laughs> even a lot more of that generation, <laughs> a little further down the road, if you will. But I'm also a teacher, so I'm exposed Lamb's to— Lamb's from the 50s, Tone, so he actually, back in the 50s— they <laughs> Back in my germs. day. They didn't even have germs back then. <laughs> <laughs> they hadn't even invented antibacterial soap yet. Yeah. Or hand sanitizer. I remember when hand sanitizer— Yeah, band-aids were a luxury. If you were infected, just put some dirt on it. You push it. <laughs> I honestly remember when hand sanitizer started becoming a thing. I do not. Yeah, like— that's when would you say that year was? I would I would say in the early to mid nineties is when I started seeing it. It's way earlier than I expected you to say. I really don't like remember. Thing. I really like, don't remember. And it was it. like it was like a, a a surprise. Like every now and then you would see it somewhere. Fascinating. And then it became much more common. Maybe this makes me filthy, but I find myself rarely even using them when I see them. I don't like it. But I mean, that's I don't what I'm trust saying. it. I, I, I everything I've read, and maybe I'm stupid for it, is that ninety nine point nine percent. That point one percent is the point is the stuff you need to worry about. I'm saying on a given year, I would say the chances of me getting sick at any point are under ten percent. I'm rarely sick every year. I'm saying I don't. I'm not super cleanly freak about anything, but I think that helps. I think if you're germaphobe on yourself all the time, I think your body becomes less immune. I, I could be completely making shit up as I go, which is a real possibility. Has its own immune system. I, I don't think if you take your shirt and you wipe off like a Coca Cola bottle, like Poof, now I'm good to go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I will wipe off something if I see active like dirt on it, but that's not. That's just because I don't want to swallow dirt. It's not because I'm worried the dirt's gonna make see, me sick. If you can see it at the macro yeah. level, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm talking like visible dirt, like not like I need special equipment and an electron microscope to see this. Stuff. My older brother also used to work in a hospital for a very long time, and Tony, would it be fair to say that in the hospital, people are sick in and out of there all the time. You rarely came home sick from that. I mean, doesn't that speak to something? I just I think people have some people have better immune systems. You get exposed to those things, like talking about the daycare. Yeah. You know, and you being a school teacher, you know, you oh, get right. all that exposure. You've you know, your body's seen these allergens, these, these pathogens. You yes. Know. I mean, Lamb is a school teacher, so what Tony's saying is right. I mean. Tony worked in a hospital. Lamb is a school teacher. I tend to think those people have a less likelihood of, of getting sick just because their body's exposed to it. I would need numbers to back that up, so I'm not going to say that's a fact. Well, one thing that I do— I just uh, wrote down a bunch of numbers to back it up, and now it is true. All right. <laughs> well, that seems how most people work with, fa <laughs> with facts these days. But um, I was having a little bit of an allergy issue, and I'd never had an allergy issue in my life. And I read something online because you know, I mm -hmm. check the internet for my mm -hmm. facts. And it said— Local wildflower honey. If you have like a teaspoon of local wildflower honey in the morning, it'll help you. And I started thinking about it, and it's the same idea. It comes from the pollen that I was having the allergic reaction to, but it's in such tiny amounts that if I'm putting it into my body, it's going to, my body now builds up the immunities to the pollen on its own. I would say there's got to be some truth to that based and on the I fact that I'm an idiot. In my yeah. own personal you know, yeah. one person study that it was highly effective. <laughs> so we can go ahead so and just that, gavel so that yeah, as yeah. fact. So let's stamp that, yeah. Frank. Uh, put that up on the board. Yeah, Frank, go ahead and put that on the board. Write that down. That's a really smart Let idea. Let the folks at home know. Yeah, and maybe go ahead and get it and tweet it out on our yeah. Twitter. Which if we anybody, if it works for you, 
You're welcome. I also, that kind of goes in the same myth as, oh, I don't know if it's a myth, but they say, you know, eating, putting lemon in hot water to start your day can be, you know, good for that kind of, I mean, all that kind of stuff. I mean, I think a lot of that is person to person. Some of that is just apple cider vinegar stuff. Oh. I used to work with a security guard. I was 85 years old. He would bring his lunch, and in his lunch, he would have a big thermos full of apple cider, warm, hot vinegar, and he would drink the whole thing at lunch. Um, uh, that man is a sociopath. Yeah, but also he lived to he was like 100, so also he was on to something. Was he? Maybe. He died at some point. So <laughs> rest in peace. <laughs> but I'm just uh, saying, like, yeah. maybe he would have lived 120 maybe without I, it. I think apple cider vinegar has got to be good for you. I don't know if I need a thermos full. <laughs> like, uh, the, 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 I'm just I'm talking more ma- about that man's like fortified constitution to get through a thermos full of apple cider vinegar. I used to think that maybe it was his way of deterring his wife, and maybe he thought if I could just drink enough of this, it would pour through my veins. Was he, he never? Or was it. he maybe like trying to poison himself? Get out, <laughs> get out of the marriage early. I hope not. Um, <laughs> just like I've heard, this is the only poison just, I'm allowed to have. I just don't need it if I need a 16 ounce Coke bottle full of it. But uh, how much apple cider vinegar you go? Thermos every I day. It's insanity. <laughs> I'm saying. You're in the grocery store. People are going to be yelling at us. People are going to be saying, it is really good for you. And I'm going to say, yeah, I know it's good for you. I just don't know if you need a thermos full. You know? I'm saying you're at Costco and you're buying multiple jugs of apple cider vinegar. I'll take the wholesale box of 16-ounce bottles of vinegar, right? Like, like That's a lot of Someone's got to be questioning that, the volume of apple cider vinegar you're going Real through. Real quick, on your opinion, though, if I had somebody – if I had a bunch of people lined up for five years, one of them took – uh, 10 ounces of vinegar and drank it every day. One group did not. Any benefit at the end of that? 10 ounces seems like a strong amount. I want it to be something more than like a shot glass because I don't think that has any say in anything. I would have to say there's got to be some difference. <laughs> <laughs> positive or negative, I don't know. Okay. But I guarantee there's a difference in their bodies. I would have to assume positive for me because I've heard nothing but good things about apple cider vinegar. And... Again... Is there one guy out there doing the apple cider vinegar test? He's Who? probably the same guy. <laughs> yeah, no, he's also between, cracking knuckles. While he's waiting for the cracking knuckle people to come back, is he like just, asking I for I think we just figured that out. Yeah. We can go ahead and deem that as fact. And the crowd really, <laughs> <laughs> the crowd really likes the fact that we were able to put that together. Um, all right. So we got that one knocked out. Seems like we're really burying through some of these myths uh, in a really uh, educated way here. Um, so let's go ahead and jump to the next one here. Uh, let's see what's one that, oh, this is one that I actually had an issue with. Some of these I was like, oh, I couldn't believe these weren't true. But some of them I was like, oh, shit. (laughs) This one said that the myth that if you gave kids sugar and that they would become hyperactive is not true. That sugar has really no outcome on the energy level of a kid. I feel like I've actually seen it at play. I I have a (laughs) Just, again, anger to this one. Right. Because sugar is carbohydrates, and carbohydrates are fuel for your body. Good, bad, whatever. They, they, by definition, have to affect your energy level. I 1,000% agree. Uh, Let's see here. The researchers concluded that parents who believe sugar impacts behavior will think their children have become more hyperactive after consuming sugar. But that it doesn't actually have that effect. People have said that when the st- scientists actually study it, that he said, but all that energy is due to your kids being excited, not from the sugar in their system. Uh, so apparently they're saying that. that uh, so they're just excited they got a lollipop. They're not like <sighs> actually affected by the lollipop. Like- it says the misconception comes from the idea that increased blood sugar levels translate into hyperactive behavior. It's true that someone with low blood sugar levels, known as having hypoglycemia, can get an energy boost from a drinking sugar-filled drink. But it's a different story if someone has a sugary treat when he or she doesn't have low blood sugar. The body will normally regulate those sugars. If, if, if it needs, it will use the energy. If it doesn't need it, it will convert it to fat or storage. So what it's saying is, yes, essentially what you're drinking could be used as energy, but it does no way make your kid hyper. I feel like if I gave little Timmy uh, uh, a bunch of Laffy Taffy, uh, just a bag full of it, I feel like that kid is going to be... I See, I have... You have more this. bearing in this than any. He is. This is a. This is an elementary school teacher. Uh, yeah, ele- I've taught at elementary, middle, and high school levels. And the day of Halloween and the day after Halloween 
are a shit show. Physical nightmare. Like, it is a noticeable difference. And you can try and chalk it up to excitement for Halloween. Not gonna, that's not, not gonna, enough. No. no, not for me. Super pumped to be wearing a costume at school. Not enough. None of these things are can <laughs> like well, all right, cover in your this own idea. life. Do you feel like if you had a uh, a bunch of Skittles? Do you, I don't think I've noticed any energy increase if I had a bunch of Skittles. Now, if I have a soda, I can feel like I have a spike, but maybe that's just because there's caffeine in there. Mm, yeah, like yeah, if I have like a Sprite that doesn't have any caffeine, I'm not noticing. But uh, I have a Coke. Yeah, I'm gonna notice something. But I will say. Part of that is if I have a Mexican Coke, yeah, I notice a wildly different response than if I have a regular Coke. For you guys at home, Kevin's not being racist. Uh, Mexican Coke here out in L.A. is Coke that is made with real sugar and made in Mexico, not the Coca-Cola that you drink at the normal store. Very, very common out here in Los Angeles. It's actually become one of my absolute favorite things. I know it's a very small difference in Coke, but a Mexican Coke bottle made with real sugar is, in my opinion, three to four times better than a Coke in a plastic bottle. But I'm saying you notice a difference. And that's actual fact. <laughs> but between a regular Coke and oh, a thousand percent, that's, and that's I what I'm saying. I actually think I feel better after a Mexican Coke. And I Coke. think that's part of the problem is most of the sugar we get now isn't sugar. It's uh, it, uh, high fructose corn syrup or whatever it is that they're using. Yeah, that. so it's not like sugar, sugar. Like I'm it's talking like, like when I was a kid, yeah. and I remember. <laughs> I, again, we're all, I'm old. We didn't have a lot of. Uh, materials at the hand but we a common science fair project was always to make a pyramid out of sugar cubes really yeah so you'd buy boxes and boxes of sugar cubes must be before video games i guess it's <laughs> before a lot of it <laughs> but you would it was wild yeah and you'd build your your mock pyramid out of sugar cubes and everything like that and it looked cool but invariably you would eat these sugar cubes and like as you're Right, you know, as you're building this thing, and it is a big difference between like a sugar and some sort of like corn syrup or something. I like agree that. with that. It's actually really funny because corn syrup has been proven to be so awful for you, and it's funny that we even got lazy enough that we couldn't just use sugar, which is crazy to me. But that's another time and, for and those. sugar's cheap. It's really cheap. <laughs> like, how much cheaper is this? Corn you could go into any coffee place and just steal a bunch of packets. No, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's free at Seven yeah. Eleven. Like, it's like, yeah, that's that's also a fact. Bunch of facts tonight. Uh, <laughs> not a myth. Not a myth. That's uh, an actual fact. So, uh, yeah, that was that one surprised us. I think if anybody I has any feelings on that, yeah, if anybody based on say, my actual again my experiences, yeah, if you have kids and, and you think it's and actually it's also, ridiculous, like please they're let talking us about know. children. Children react different to different things than adults do. Yeah. I agree. If I and maybe it's because their bodies are smaller, so maybe the amount of sugar affects them greater. Yeah. Maybe I, if I ate like six pounds of Skittles, yeah. maybe I'd have like the same effect. I, I, yeah. I mean, I feel like you know the times that I've given kids Tylenol PM, it's really worked with them. Wait, that's not right. <laughs> there's no sugar in Tylenol PM. <laughs> well, they did get sleepy though, so that definitely works. So, so if there's no sugar, they get sleepy. Yeah. So well, that's, that's what that's what I got out of yeah, that. Yeah. And then I gave them a bunch of alcohol, and they did get sleepy there too. So you <laughs> know, it does. Are you giving kids? <laughs> oh, this Most is kids a... don't like alcohol. It was a wild party. I was at a long time ago. <laughs> These kids were crazy. <laughs> that's that's Nick at a party. Yeah. There it is. All right. So next subject here. A subject here. Um, let's see. What's a what's a let's one? Go a quick one. Yeah. Give me two. Sitting. Too close to the TV. Yeah, that was... Now, this one, again... We disagree with. Well, no, this one is a little different. Me being older, and this is what I think. I think it was true. Because TV technology, way back when, they used some fucking crazy <laughs> shit to make these things work. And I do feel like there was some sort of radiation... See, like, I... I like deal that was going on in... Like, and the pictures and the screens were so small that I think kids at that point were sitting legitimately close to these TVs to see them. Okay, but also the myth clearly states that sitting too close to the TV will ruin your eyesight. And what I looked up said, and this is where, again, just kind of like the vitamin C, oh, I'm sorry, like the carrot argument, which is like it's almost based in some form of truth. They said that the internet, and by they I mean the internet, said that um, – Said yeah. that when you sit too close to the TV, it does strain your eyes. So they said that's where probably it came from, but they said there's been no link between eye strain and losing your vision. But I would be willing to guess if I took you and me and for five years I sat a foot away from the television and you sat at a normal distance, 
and we looked at our eyes. Well, you know, damn it. I mean, genes could affect that, I guess. But I, I, I tend to feel like straining your eyes that for that long does have some impact at some well, point. I would also say straining anything for right. that long is going to affect that thing. <laughs> yes. I like agree. whatever it is, eyes, your muscles, muscles. Yeah. yeah, like anything you strain, I feel like at some point gets weak. So, uh, you know, it's hard for me to imagine that your eye muscles don't at some point wear down. I don't know, eye muscles, your rods, your cones, you know, your ups, your downs, whatever they are in there. I feel like at some point they probably get weak. I think they're just tiny movie screens in there. That's possible. Do you know that we actually see everything upside down and the thing flips it for us? That's crazy. Like our vision is yeah. actually upside down. Something inside there just gives it the old one, two, and then we can see it correctly. Crazy stuff. Also, very factually based, could be wildly inaccurate. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> wildly inaccurate. So that was a quick one there. We thought that was kind of fascinating. Um, let's see. What one that we said? Oh, this, this one. The shaving. So, you know, everything, again, from TVs to uh, even commercials with this myth that if you shave, your hair will grow back thicker. Now, And now there was some form of specification there. It was that when you shave um, – your hair teen seems to what, what was it? I, it was your hair is thicker at the base right than at the ends right so it usually when it's first growing it looks thicker. it looks thicker right so again though I've been told this a million times that if I so I'm 31 years old and I have facial hair like a 16 year old child that's splotchy and a boy that's just gone through puberty and hasn't quite got facial hair in all the right places. So people have been telling me for 10 years, all I got to do is just shave every day and then I look like a like axe a cutter from Oregon. Thing. Yeah, but I shave once a week and I have seen no improvement in my <laughs> facial hair. So I maybe again genetics. We I guess genetics come back into play, but I. I don't know. I feel like there's got to be truth to that. It's weird to me that it wouldn't be true. I, I'm like, concerned. And I, I, maybe it has to do with the fact like when you start shaving, usually you're in the beginning stages of getting hair. And you're actually really paying attention. Well, and then so like you're going to get more hair anyway, even if you didn't shave. But because you started, yes. then you like the timelines line up. Right. So it's just like, oh, that, you know, it's like. Cause versus, uh, what's it? I don't even remember. I'll have to look it up. But it's causation versus like. Replication something. versus scientification. People are probably screaming at their microphones <laughs> right now. Like, you fucking <laughs> That's fair enough. Good it's, enough. That's yeah. the name of the show. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. So that one was kind of a one for us that also kind of uh, had us shaking our heads a little bit. Um, this is something. And the next one for me is, it actually goes with two myths that I've heard. Um, this myth is that celery is so low in calories that eating it actually is negative calories because your body has to chew it and then your body has to break it down. So there, the claim is that by all of that movement and, and activity that this low calories thing is actually, actually burning calories by eating celery. I am an idiot, but I also tend to think I'm a rational human being. That would imply that if I had somehow a field of celery – that I just was uh, just mowing through, you know, that it's by the end of it, I would be ripped. Like that just, that to me sounds stupid, but I don't know. See now, like it's one of those ones, like, I don't necessarily believe it's negative. Like I could eat a burger and then go through like six stalks of celery and then call it even. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, I mean but I do realize that like most of your calories are burned up in just your day to day life. You're yeah. doing things like chewing, food, masticating, whatever you want to yeah. call it. Uh, you know, I processing. Do that solo, but <laughs> yeah, by myself. Because you're weird and do it in the dark. <laughs> but you know, everybody, everybody treats their kitchen their, their own way. <laughs> yes. Um. But. Let's talk about our mastication. <laughs> yeah, that'll be another episode. <laughs> it's a touchy subject. Yeah. No. Hey. Hey. Right. Hey. <laughs> I don't want to rub you the wrong way. <laughs> and fuckers. Okay, so. <laughs> um, but I do think that it's probably pretty close to negative if it's not. So it's basically water, right? It's like 90% water. Something like that, but and it is fibrous and it is like tough to get through, so you do have to chew it a lot. And I like I could see where this myth came from. I could see, and if you're adding that in to your diet, like as a replacement for potato chips, yeah, like yes, now it is a negative calorie food because you just saved two hundred 
300, are, 500 calories of potato chips. you put five chips. instead yeah. in, right? Yeah, or maybe one. But yeah. there also is like a – it also is related to a lot of other very similar myths. Uh, that my dad used to work as a personal trainer, and he used to have a lot of. Now this is again back in the, my dad's old, so maybe like the eighties or something. When again there was no hey. internet. <laughs> Some of us around in the eighties. So back in the eighties, uh, and he said that people really believed that eating ice or you know cold water, again same idea was that your body had to heat up the water. And so be in order for it to digest it, therefore, by heating it up, it was actually burning calories. So if you just drank cold water every day, you could burn calories by doing so. I mean, I don't think I'd actually need the internet, but maybe the internet has spoiled me because when I hear that, I think the amount of calories your body's got to be using trying to heat up that water have to be so, so inconsequential. That was going to be my point. Yeah, I was like, uh, even if it's true, which it and might, it might be. and scientifically, I could see it being true. Right. Like it does require your body more work to like either cool down or heat up water, depending on what's going in your body. Right. So, but over the course of that glass of water, like I'm thinking you're getting like a, a net effect of like three calories. I, if I would say, and I'm going to be honest, I think there's a real chance that it's even lower than that. I think we're talking about maybe a half a calorie, right? Like I just, well, and the problem is too, like when we talk about food calories, those aren't real calories, right? I They're mean, kilo calories, which are a thousand regular calories. So I remember like, my science, I remember my science teacher one time took a, took a peanut and lit it on fire in front of us. And I remember thinking like, what's the point of this? And then that son of a bitch peanut burned for like 15 minutes. And I was like, what is going on? And she was like, people don't realize that there's a single peanut has like 50 calories. I don't know what that's way yeah. exaggerated, but 30 calories. And I was like, what? She was like, it has a ton of energy in a small space. So, with, you know, that's kind of counter to water. But, you know, yeah, there is a, there's a lot of energy in some things. Water has literally but zero. Even if it was 20 calories, a glass, the amount of like, and say you drank now 10 glasses of water and you saved 200 calories. That's not, I mean, it's not nothing, but yeah. it's. That's, I'm overestimating everything. Like, first off, you got to drink 10 glasses of water. Yep. Nobody's doing that. Nope. Unless you go to the gym and you walk around with your gallon jug, and then that's You're, another con yeah. conversation I'm sure Tony would want to chime in on. We'll leave our annoyance at the door on this one with yep. people gallon drugs, powder. Anyway. Yep. Anyway. Uh, but even still, like, the actual benefits. Like, just – and the problem is drinking water is great for you. Absolutely. So – it's already all these for you. people are that are saying that like I do all this and it's I, I feel so much you're better. You're already working out because it's probably well, way more related to that than is in cold well, water. And you're getting water. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like it's the water. It's yeah. not the temperature. It's not Kool Aid coming out of the fountain. So you just yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Um, like oh, can you guys uh, turn down the temperature of the water fountain in the gym? I gotta I gotta <laughs> try to burn some damn calories. Over <laughs> no, here. No. Yeah. Uh, so that one, uh, the the celery <laughs> negative calories, water negative calories has been wildly disproven. And even if it was somehow moderately true, if that's what you're basing your diet on, fundamentally you have zero chance. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a good alternative to uh, like a terrible for you snack. Celery. Correct. Like, Correct. Like most things. Correct. Eat the better version and you'll do better. You should be all right. Uh, real quick one here before we, I think we get to the last one. Um, I, the other one I've heard we started as a kid is that picking up frogs would give you warts. I actually remember hearing that if a frog peed on you, it would give you warts. Hmm. Never heard the pee one. Yes. But definitely the touching one. Apparently none of that's true. I, Doesn't surprise me at all. Right. But it, again, it, it, where it, did it come it, from? Okay, so maybe pro frogs were poisonous. Now, or maybe, I have a feeling this came from like cartoons or something maybe. That's absolutely possible now that you're like, saying that. you know, some sort of weird like – like. All right, this is another one. It's not really a myth, but like, like Snow White. watching like TV as a kid, like they always made jokes about how terrible Brussels sprouts tasted. Right. And then, so for as a kid, I avoided them. Like, granted, yeah. we never really had f food, food in my house. Right, right, right. If it didn't come from a package, we weren't eating it. Right. But um, so I didn't even know. Oh, have you ever seen actual Brussels sprouts? Yeah. Like what? Where they come and they look like a. Like a thing of Jingle Bells, oh, like on yeah, a stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, it's just <laughs> like ridiculous. Almost look edible, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. But then you eat them, and you're like, "These are, yeah. these are good." Well, half, I mean, half you gotta, the crowd's going to disagree, but yeah, I think it. I think. But I'm you, saying, for what they were like played off to be, you so cook, you cook feeling, the Brussels sprout well, it can be pretty damn tasty. Agreed. But I'm, yeah, I'm saying like, I think it's that kind of thing, like where some sort of weird joke 
kind of came into yeah, something and then it became like a running joke in a lot of things. I think yeah, so maybe cartoon version of this thing started and spiraled out of control. And I also think it was some weird way of moms not wanting their kids to pick up a nasty ass frog. And, yeah. and, and you know, to a certain extent, some frogs are dangerous. So yeah. let's just let's just call, it'd be it's not keeping your kids away from snakes. It's like, look, I don't know the difference between a good and a bad snake. So just let's just let's just not touch any of them. So yeah. maybe that is what kind of what had happened. But ever had warts? No, not as far as a frog. Just like no, I mean. Like, oh, on my hand? No, I as a kid, I've I got seen them a lot. Twice. Yeah, I've seen kids with them on their fingers before, and I know that they sell. What is it like? Like cold the freeze stuff. Yeah, thing. So, that was not a thing. But when I don't I was even know where that comes from. I don't know either. I got uh, same spot twice in my mm-hmm. life uh, on my thumb, and just right in the knuckle. And this wart thing grew up. I don't know where, how it comes from. Whatever, I'd have to do some research. <laughs> but I remember as a kid. Uh, having it on my hand, like thinking it's the end of my wo- world, like I had some sort of weird disease that was gonna kill me. Yeah, yeah. And then I was in a pool for like a really extended period of time as mm. a kid, as you are as a kid. Yeah. Coming out like so much chlorine in the pool, my eyes are red and all this stuff. And then I looked down and the wart just peeled off. I've never had warts of any kind. Is it a painful thing? No. Okay. At least the ones I had. Maybe the, it was awkward because it was uh, right on the knuckle, so I had could you feel been it every time. With any frog, uh, I was uh, very young, uh, but I don't remember it. I, where I grew up is a, there was not a lot of wildlife where I grew up. <laughs> okay, like, there's squirrels, chipmunks, things like that. But we didn't have like a lot of lakes or ponds or things like that to play in, so we didn't have a lot of those ki- type of things. So I didn't really have that much interaction. This makes me with sound those like things. a southerner, or maybe a little rednecky, but we used to. My parents let us, used to let us keep a frog. And so you could keep it in like a little container, little cage, not you know, a little glass cage, and you could like fill it with you know rocks and leaves and you know their natural environment. And then <laughs> yeah, we would go out at night and we would try and catch crickets, and then we put the crickets in there and they would eat them. Um, and that was like a fun nighttime activity. So I even from a young age, even though there was this wart myth going around, I kind of always thought you know it was uh, I wasn't really that scared of frogs so uh, uh, I would catch lightning bugs as a kid yeah, put them in too. jar yeah me too we did we caught lightning bugs uh, but yeah we, we were allowed to catch frogs for some reason but that was a quick one go ahead no I was oh. just gonna say yeah uh, you call them lightning bugs because some people call them fireflies no I never called them a firefly lightning bugs were everything I firefly didn't hear that term until it was much much older so that's interesting too um, final one for us today is also a very common one which is uh, eating. And then going swimming and how you are not able to do it. Yeah, we've been saving this one. I bet there's been a lot of people like, what about this one? Yeah, yeah, what about this yeah, one? Yeah. I, again, claiming online that there's there's no truth to it. But, you know, because they said while your body's still digesting the food, it's very dangerous to do some physical activity because once you start physical activity, then the digestion stops. I, I, I'm not saying that that is true, but I also have a hard time – believing that if I go and eat food and then I go do some Michael Phelps type swim across the pool, that it's not in some way going to negatively affect my stomach. I mean, am, am I, I think uh, the bigger issue here is we were always taught that like it, you're going to die. Right, right. Like it was some sort of thing. Like if your feet touch the water and it, ha- it like there's a clock in your body and you're at 28 minutes. Yeah. You're at, and like, I remember, I don't know. It would makes no sense for parents too, because it was always like this thing where they had to like fight you to yeah. like keep you out of the pool. It wasn't like it helped them in any way. Yeah, I mean, maybe they thought you were gonna throw up, but I, I actually think it's like a lot of our myths. I think they thought it was true. I think yeah. there's a lot of those myths that they really thought were true because they had been told it was true. And God bless their souls, they didn't have internet, so yeah, they never like, really, you know. Did I, somebody at one point like eat a hamburger, get in a pool, swim to the middle, and then just go ah, and yeah. then like or just. Wilhelm scream. And then ah! just... Yeah, it's just all croaked. <laughs> and then they're... And, just and, and they and just died. sunk to the bottom and died. And they were yeah, like, oh, sure. it was a cramp. You ate. And yeah. that's why he died. Like, I mean, but I think that... I think, again, the truth is to it that if you ate... If I ate a big hoagie and then I go in and, and try and do like a triathlon, I think I'm going to puke that son of a bitch back up. So I don't yeah, know, I, you know... I, I, <laughs> I believe that there are correct foods for the activity. Right. Like maybe you have like an apple before you work out just to give yourself a little something in there. But apparently but, the rumor that you can't eat and then immediately go take a swim is not factually accurate and then apparently if you do that you will be just fine it obviously depends on what you ate but that would depend on anything but again i think that if i ate something and i went for a swim and i ate yogurt and i went for a swim i think my body's going to be upset about it but apparently 
Science world says I'm wrong. But see, like, again, I think it depends on what you eat and yeah. the level of activity you're doing. Yeah. Like, Correct. if you're just going in there, splashing around, chilling, like, maybe jumping off the diving board, swimming to the ladder, you should be all you're right. fine. No, you're going to go out there and try and swim out. a mile straight? Yeah, yeah. It might have some uh, detrimental effects. I think that I think that they really just eat your food. They want you to eat your food, sit down, relax for a second, let it digest. Again, the myth that it's going to be digested in 30 minutes is also nonsense. Like, that's not true either. None not even the, close. Not even close. Your body's still trying to figure out what the hell's in there. If so. anything, I think it's almost worse to wait the 30 minutes. Right. I, because then it's like starting the whole thing. Yeah. Like, all right, I guess we're just like... So, uh, yeah, none of that is apparently super accurate. But, again, me and Lamb has a lot of these myths go have our small reservations. We still, we're still we still holding on to some truth from our grandparents. Some of these are so ingrained in my life. Right. Like, it just doesn't matter. I'm not going to start swallowing gum. <laughs> like, no, yeah, no, I'm still going to eat and wait 25 minutes. You <laughs> yeah. know, I'm just still going to do it. I yeah. don't know. I still feel like if I have some sugar, I feel like I imaginarily feel some form of a hyper boost. But apparently none of that's true. Yeah. Uh, so apparently if I'm ever babysitting your kids, I can just give them as much candy as I want. Throw them in the pool. <laughs> yeah. And they'll be fine. And not hyper. <laughs> and not hyper. But as long as you get them vitamin C, they should be able to see you know, in the pool and at night. Yeah, and then I'll feed them some carrots so they can see at night, and <laughs> it'll be all good. And then when they're done, we'll give them some turkey, and they'll fall asleep, and bada-boom, bada-bing, you've taken care of my kids. Yeah, so apparently what we've learned is how to properly babysit kids. Boom. That's what this podcast could have been called. Yeah, I think we should, might have to change the title. Yes. How to babysit. That's We should never call it that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> For sure. For sure. So that's the uh, those are the myths that we wanted to cover tonight. If anybody has one that has not been covered, that's a really common one. And we saw a couple out there. You know, lightning doesn't strike pla- uh, the same place in two places or same, the same place twice. Uh, I, Ask the Empire State Building. How yeah, they, it's, the Empire State, State Building is struck like 100 times every year. So that's obviously false. I mean, I, I don't know if I ever truly believed that as a kid. But there's some other ones out there that are pretty, com- pretty common. Um, but we never saw anyone that we thought truly that we believed as kids. There was some, you know, fibs that grandparents would say, but nothing that I thought stood out as, oh, I definitely believe that, you know. Uh, I mean, I guess Santa, but I don't think Santa's a fib. That's not really what we're talking about. We're talking about facts, you know what I mean? That yeah, have been, like. That, have been, that could be proven scientifically wrong. Yeah, you know? at certain points you got – Got the in on the real yeah. truth for Correct. other things later. Correct. Right? Like, oh, th- that's that. I think we should thing. do a second podcast at some point about other myths, not just childhood myths, because I think there's a lot of myths that probably could be debunked. Oh, yeah. I wanted this one to be more yeah. those those ones. The funny ones. Yeah. Kids, the, yeah. We had a whole list of things that we won't even talk about on the myths. Yes. And uh, slash conspiracy. Yeah. conspiracy theories on the next podcast though i think we're going to have a couple guests here uh me and uh kevin wanted to do a couple just me and him hanging out and uh jib jabbing going at each other um i thought i made some really good points today uh, i thought lamb kind of struggled to articulate what he was thinking but neither here nor there i thought we both did a very good job um uh yeah i would say we both did a very good job my job was better eight and a half I well, if you're you an eight and a half, solid six, like it's a good six. I don't think you can even be better than 16, six. Sixteen, maybe. Sixteen, maybe. <laughs> it's on a scale of ten. So yeah, that exactly just proves my point right there. <laughs> exactly. That's all you need to know. <laughs> but uh, as always, folks, we really appreciate you guys hanging out. Uh, Lamb, I don't know what we're gonna do next. I don't know if you have any idea, but I'm sure it'll be interesting. Yeah, we'll uh, check the email, see what the people are asking for. Um, maybe talk to the sponsors, see what they want us to put out. Coca Cola. Uh, we'll uh, we're gonna have some. Uh, web pages and instagrams and all sorts of stuff put up and we should have some new music here soon so uh you know uh if you're uh, listening uh, keep going we're gonna have some the quality of this awful podcast at some point is gonna increase it could be 10 15 years from now but you know we're willing to take it slow you know yeah, but it's on the incline <laughs> very even if it's just even so if, slight yeah you might not notice the incline <laughs> Almost hard for the Almost human eye. Almost imperceptible, I believe. To the human eye. <laughs> yeah. But it's there. Uh, once again, though, appreciate you guys listening. I'm Nick. I'm Kevin. And we're two dumb idiots. Yeah.